So men still exist, obviously. Um, there's still guys around who have the hardware that it takes to be men, uh, who have all the chromosomes that are necessary to be genetically men, but somehow they've forgotten what it means uh, or what those traits, those inherently masculine traits, are to be used for. So there's lots of pressures on a man not to live as a man, not to live for the good of others, uh, not least of which uh, is the pressure from within. Uh, his own selfish drive, his own uh, desire to take care of himself before others, uh, to put his own needs ahead of everyone else's, um, which is fundamentally not what it means to be a man. It's what it means to be a boy, to be selfish and self-centered. And then there's pressures from outside of him, uh, pressures from a culture that is no friend of genuine masculinity, that views uh, sort of the the ruggedness, the wildness of real masculinity as something that needs to be bred out, cultivated out of our men to make them nice and civilized and tame them. Uh, and then there's the overreaction on the other side, the, uh, the hyper-masculine distortions of what it need, means to be a man. So against kind of a feminized culture, some men react by, uh, by thinking masculinity is just a caricature, uh, that it's all about big guns or big trucks or big muscles and as long as you have those things then you're really a man. But none of those things makes you a man. Uh, what makes you a man, what makes you genuinely masculine uh, is learning to live for the good of others.